So before I get into this video, make sure you go into the description box below and download the free PDF guide to go right along. I'm basically using that guide as a script for this video, so it'll be very beneficial for you now and a great resource for you in the future. I'm gonna be covering five things in this guide, starting with the history of the Cracky Method, types of Cracky Gardens, understanding nutrient concentration, preventing algae, and then I wanna run you guys through a step-by-step -step procedural guide to starting your Cracky Garden. So let's start with the history of the Cracky Method. So it's actually named after a researcher at the University of Hawaii in Hilo. His name is Bernard Cracky, and he's been spending most of his adult life publishing papers, doing research, uh, doing experiments on the non-circulating passive hydroponic method, as he refers to it in all of his papers. I suppose he's too humble to call it the Cracky method, and maybe the scientific method wouldn't approve of that for publishing his papers. Either way, here we are now, everyone calling it the Cracky Method, named after Mr. Cracky, who still works at the University of Hawaii as a researcher. Now, I'm going to also include in the PDF links to all of his published papers, uh, so you can get a better understanding of exactly what he's trying to say. It is for a scientific publication, so my hope is that my guides and these videos will kind of put these more technical papers into layman's terms for you. So, so now let's look into the different types of Cracky Gardens. This would be using the Cracky method of non-circulating passive hydroponics and different applications. So let's take a look at those. The most popular and the most authentic, the one that's published the most frequently, is the single-use Cracky garden. Now this is going to be your jar garden. If, if you're trying to do like heads of lettuce or herbs growing out of you know mason jars to the massive like 50 gallon barrel or trash can jars which actually there's a fun link in the pdf to a cucumber trash can jar that bernard cracky has uh, has published as well so for the single use garden you fill it one time with your nutrients your water you plant your plant and you walk away you don't come back until that water has been absorbed and the plant is done growing that's the principle it's super easy very straightforward you can do it anywhere so the next type of garden is if you're cloning or you're propagating, you can use a cracky garden as a great, great way to regrow your kitchen scraps, to start clones from larger plants. It's a really, really cool gardening method that you can apply to all sorts of different techniques. So let's first talk about propagating. Let's say you buy uh, some chives, some uh, some garlic chives or some green onions from the store. You use them up, but you still have a little root at the end. You can just take that little root, put it in some water and allow it to start growing and allow it to propagate and grow new shoots for you. So you can just keep trimming them off. That's a great example of propagating using the Cracky Method. Cloning using the Cracky Method is a whole other thing and I think it's really cool. So if you're not familiar with cloning, it's another form of propagating in which you take a cutting off a of plant, just basically a, a branch with a couple little nodes on it. And then you reintroduce that branch to some growth hormone to trigger some growth and then you simply let it grow and it'll grow an entirely new plant that is an exact clone of the plant that it came from. Cracky gardens are a great way to do this because you can turn one plant into 15 or 16 smaller plants easily with the cloning method and fill out an entire mason jar collection of cracky gardens. Understanding nutrient concentration. This is absolutely crucial uh, for having a healthy cracky garden. Basically, it's the same principles as uh, if you've ever made a soup and you want to concentrate the flavors down by boiling some of the water out. The same thing happens in your cracky garden. As the water is absorbed, it's going to leave behind the heavier nutrients that are all going to get concentrated at the bottom 10%. So when you start your garden, if you load in the maximum nutrients, by the time you get to the end, you're likely going to have tip burn and some issues with your roots, especially if you're transplanting to another garden. What I recommend to negate this problem is I always load half. So if I'm planning on ending at about 1500 parts per million, then I'll load in 650 to 750 to start off with. This has never been an issue for me and has led to fantastic growth in both my transplants and my single use cracky gardens. Uh, so don't be afraid to load about 650 to 750 parts per million to start off with. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say parts per million or EC, um, pick up one of these. This is a EC or PPM meter, and it's gonna tell you uh, the nutrient density of your water. It's essential for measuring your nutrients. So the last thing I wanna talk about before I get into the step-by-step -step guide is preventing algae. It's extremely important to keep your garden out of direct sunlight. Uh, if you're doing like a mason jar garden and you wanna see your roots grow, that's all fine and dandy, but you really don't wanna have any direct sunlight hitting the side of that jar or it's going to create algae. Algae is gonna suffocate your roots and kill your plants. Any wet surface, 
that light hits will grow algae. So it's always a good idea to either pick up the UV jars, uh, just cover up your jar. You can use a book. You can create plant collars like I did in this video. Try to keep light away from the nutrient reservoir in your water. This is especially crucial if you're gonna be growing something larger for a longer period of time and algae can really get growing in like that trash can, for example. All right, so now I wanna walk you guys through step-by-step -step setting up your own cracky garden. All right, so step one, choose your plants and your garden. Let's consider the size of the garden in relation to the water absorption and the nutrient concentration that we just learned about. Now, number two, fill the reservoir with a mixture of water and nutrients around 650 to 750 parts per mil. Now let's leave a small gap for humid air to develop at the top. And this gap is gonna vary depending on the shape of your reservoir, but the ratio is about 90% water to 10% air. And when the plant is done growing, it's gonna be the opposite, 10% water to 90% air. Now we're gonna place the plant in a lid and submerge it in water. This could be either a net pot with clay pebbles or rock wool or a cloning cuff, depending on what you're trying to do. Number five, be sure to give the plant adequate light for photosynthesis. Don't allow light to contact with any of the constantly wet surfaces or algae will grow. That's really it. It's a very simple method. Uh, it's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be set it and forget it. That's why I think it's so cool. I'm really glad you guys are here learning about the Cracky method because uh, I want its popularity to just explode. If you guys have any questions or comments, please be sure to check out humblegrowthhydroponics.com. That's where I'm going to be answering most of my questions and responding directly to emails there. It's, it's really tough to keep up with everything everything on YouTube and I find that's more of a streamlined place where people who are serious about gardening and uh, have serious questions can ask me about them. You're also going to find all of my resources, free PDF guides and blueprints for gardens, as well as a forum with other gardeners and I'm doing a weekly newsletter about everything hydroponic. So let's grow together.